Well, most of the modeling is done for my project here, but I realize that I need one last thing. And what I need is a padlock on a door. Um, the kid's got to feel like he's like he's trapped. So anyway, this is what I'm doing as I'm modeling a padlock. Um, this is pretty basic modeling, so um, I'm, I'm not going to be uh, um, making any earth-shattering revelations about blender modeling or anything. But um, there are a couple things that I thought might be useful here. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to make little rivets on the top and the bottom of the uh, padlock. Um, and I'm putting the one in place here and then I'm going to select it, use shift D and duplicate it and then select them both and do it again and select two more and duplicate it again and so on. It's just um, a nice process there. Um, now I'm going to mirror and what I need to do is put the cursor in the center, change the um, editing options to around cursor, and then I mirrored around the z-axis. Um, another nice little trick that I got from the uh, Creature Factory DVD is to select several um, uh, polygons and then use uh, shift V which is aligned to selected and what that allows you to do is make the viewport here exactly per perpendicular to um, the, uh, the polygons and then you can uh, add a, a circle like I'm, I'm doing here place it just so that you can basically it's like a boolean operation for a um, subsurfaced object it's pretty slick so that's uh, sh shift V aligned to s selected and what I'm doing here is I'm just um, making the curved part of the um, of the padlock, making the holes. Um, I've I've seen a lot of people on forums um, seem to shy away from subsurface modeling with um, when they're dealing with inorganic objects like machinery or metal or something like that but I really find that you can get nice sh uh, sharp edges even with a su uh, subsurfed object like I'm I'm doing here I just add an extra edge with control R and you can see that that's a nice crisp edge there so I don't know I, I just think that uh, people sometimes get afraid of subsurf modeling um, when they're dealing with uh, machinery or, or or something and I don't think you need to be so now what I've done is I've uh, created a new object created a, um, a, a cylinder, placed it in one of the holes, mirrored it to the other hole across the x-axis, and now and then extruded it up and curved it in, and the um, mirror was set to do clipping. So I just curved it right up and curved it into the um, center and and they met with a nice clean um, so there was no seam where they met 
Now I think what I'm going to do is just do the um, plate that the padlock goes into. And I think I'm going to, I think if I recall, I do that with a whole other object. What I did just there is I duplicated the little round thing with Shift D, moved it away. While it was selected, I hit P and uh, separated it in to be another object. Now here's what I mean about mechanical things and um, modeling with uh, subsurf on. If you take if you add with Control R some extra edges and then push them off to the edge, like I'm doing here, you can get some pretty sharp edges. And there's really nothing in the real world that has exactly sharp edges, 90 degree angles. I mean, even the sharpest edge on a piece of machinery is still a bit rounded. And yeah, you can use bevel and all that, and that's and that's good too. I just this is the way I do it. So, and once again, I use the uh, Shift V align to selected for this also. And what I'm doing here is I'm making a hole for the um, the little half ring that's going to accept the. Uh, the the padlock and here I'm just selecting two edges and hitting F and creating a, a, f a face between those two edges same here and then what I do is I use control R to add a few more edges and pull them out to get a a nice edge. So then we can un bring the padlock back in and place it and so you get a sense of where it's gonna go got more to do with the hinge and things like that, but there you go, padlock.